So let's talk about the concept of flux. Um, we're going to eventually get to the electric flux and Gauss's law, but let's start with a system that's not connected to electrostatics, that is um, fluid flow. Same um, analogy the book uses to define flux, and I think it's a useful one, so we'll do it here too. Um, so let's consider a system in which water is flowing. Let's take a river, okay? So I have a river here. Here's the bank, uh, one bank of the river. Here's the other bank of the river. Um, let's put a rock in the middle, okay? Um, so as you have fluid, that's water that's flowing downstream from left to right, let's say. Uh, but everywhere inside the river, the velocity is not uniform, okay? Neither the direction nor the magnitude of the, the speed of the water, the velocity of the water is the same everywhere. So you're going to have a field, a vector field V uh, for the flow of the water that's a function of position and time, okay? Um, now this is very much like uh, our electric field. Um, it's a vector field also. And one way we choose to visualize an electric field is using field lines. And you can do something equivalent with uh, fluid flow by using what you might call flow lines. And you define it in the same way, that the flow line is everywhere um, tangent to the velocity vector. Okay, And so I could, for instance, draw a flow line that might look like this. The velocity gets affected by the banks of the river and the rock. And maybe another one here that's headed right for the rock, but it gets diverted around. Okay. And so your you know a flow line might be reasonably drawn like that. Okay. So looking at this system, there's a question I could ask, um, which is how much fluid goes to the uh, above the rock versus below the rock, okay, or to the left of the rock versus to the right of the rock. So I, I might imagine drawing an imaginary surface, okay, that might look like this. Okay, so there's the, you know, imagine a, a square surface that I plunge into the river, you know, in, in my head, um, and this is the top of that surface here. And so, and then I might have another one on the other side. And the question I can ask is how much water um, per unit time, how much mass per unit time crosses the red surface versus the green surface? Okay, and to know you know how that works, I need to know something about the velocity of the river. I need to know how much of the flow is diverted to the left versus to the right. And if I know the flow field, I have all the information I need. Well, really, I need to know two things. If I want to ask about the mass of um, water that's traveling across those surfaces, um, what I'm going to consider is the density. So this is the mass density, kilograms per unit volume. If I multiply that by the velocity, the vector field velocity, um, this quantity is going to be the number of kilograms, the amount of mass, um, that flows uh, across a unit area, unit area, in a certain amount of time. Okay, and you can, you know, this is basically just writing out the units. I can do it again. If you look at this quantity, it's kilograms per meter cubed times meters per second. So this is going to be meters, uh, sorry, kilograms on top, kilogram per meter squared per second. Okay. Now it also has a vector associated with it because the fluid can go in different directions. I, if I know the speed of the fluid, that doesn't help me. I'm looking at, at the problem I've posed here. I need to know how much gets diverted to the red surface and how much gets diverted to the, the green surface. So knowing the direction and the velocity is also important in establishing and being able to answer this question. Okay. Um, now. This quantity is a local quantity, so rho times v is kind of the local per unit area amount of mass that flows. So I need to consider an area if I want to answer the question, how much mass per unit time? And so the area that I'm considering will be the, the area of these two surfaces that I've, you know, in my head imagined immersing in the fluid. So I can, you know, as, as I immerse it there, I want to watch and count how, much, how many kilograms cross that surface. Um, and so you need to m at least multiply by an area. Um, but if the velocity um, is not uniform, it turns out, if, so for example, you have more, uh, a, a stronger flow on one part of the surface um, than you do on another. So, you know, velocity is really big here and really weak here. Um, your, uh, your net flow will not just be V times the area because the V is varying. What you have to do is integrate over the area, okay? And so the net flow of, of mass, the kilograms per unit time, so I'll call that gamma here, um, will now be the integral of this quantity rho 
times v. Now it's important that I have the direction of the velocity because I want to know how much goes through the surface. Okay, and that, tell, that, I, that information is connected to the direction of the velocity vector. Now if I want to account for that, um, so I'm not just going to multiply by a dA here, okay, to, to add it up. I need to account for this possibility that the, the vector will not actually be pointing through the surface. It might be pointing along the surface. So what I do to account for the direction of the velocity relative to the surface is dot it with dA. And let me explain what I mean by that, okay? So um, if we consider a surface here, and we have a velocity vector um, that's like this, for example. What I'm interested in is the piece of the velocity that makes fluid flow through the surface, okay, and not along it. And so um, in this configuration, then um, the way I'm going to define dA, let me start with that. Sorry, I should have said that earlier. Um, I'm going to define dA if I have a little um, area element to be the, the size of that area times the normal vector, okay? And what I mean by the normal vector is if I take a bit of area here, it's going to be the vector that points normal to the surface, so perpendicular. Now I could choose this one or I could choose this one. So there's a convention here. I get to choose. If, I, if, you know, if I'm asking the question how much water flows per unit time, I kind of have a sense as to which direction I want it to flow across the surface so I can pick the unit vector how I see fit. So if I go down and look at this area I've drawn here, so here's my, say, a little bit of dA, here's my velocity. Um, so the normal vector, I'm interested in how much goes across the surface, so we'll pick it like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now if I look at this uh, and consider a bit of fluid, so it, you know, it doesn't matter how I orient the velocity, as long as it goes through the surface, this bit of mass will eventually be over here, right? Um, now, uh, however, because I tilt the velocity vector, it gets there less quickly. So if, if I happen to have, let me draw another example over here, if I happen to have a uh, surface like this, same surface, but now I have the velocity going straight in, the amount of time it takes to get this bit of mass from the same original location here, let's say these are same distances, it doesn't look that way, um, but the time it takes to go from here to here will be shorter than in this case where I tilt it and I you know, spend some of my time going vertically instead of going across. And that counts here, so I'm interested again in how much, how much time it takes, how much kilograms per unit time come across the surface. And so this, this process here will be less efficient at getting the mass across than this one. Okay. Um, so let's go back and quantify um, the why it's a dot product. So if I have again my um, surface, get my right color here, and I have my velocity coming in like this. What I'm interested in is the um, the component of the velocity that goes through the surface. So I can break this up into two components here, this, this vector here, and uh, one that goes across the surface and one that goes along the surface, okay? So here, I've messed that up. Let me try one more time here. So here's my velocity, here's my surface. So the components that I'm interested in are the component this way, across the surface and along the surface. And it's this one that matters. So if I have a motion that's along the surface, I'm not going to carry fluid through the surface with that motion. The one that matters is going to be this component. Now if I have my normal vector here, it turns out that the angle between the, the velocity and the normal vector, I can call that theta, that's the same uh, angle here. So the component that matters is going to be the V cosine theta component. And this is V, of course. So that's the that's the component that's actually carrying fluid across the surface, and hence that's the dot product. So this is the same as V dot n hat, okay? And or when I write it in the integral form, it'll be the same as V dot dA, okay? And that's why I get my flux having this particular form, okay? And that tells me the rate at which mass goes across the surface. Let me stop there.